We're going deep today. There's an art to drilling a precision hole. There's so many aspects that come into play. The tolerance that you're trying to hold on the diameter, or if you need to use a spot drill, if you need to use a pilot drill, how round the hole needs to be, how straight the hole needs to be. Most people will tell you that an eight times D drill, that's where the cutoff is. Don't drill anything past this without a pilot drill. But what about a 12 times D drill? Can we drill with this with no pilot drill? This is the new 12 times D Kinemetal Universal Drill that they claim you do not need a pilot drill for. So today, we're gonna to put that to the test. Now the biggest concern we're gonna have with using a drill this long without a pilot drill is to see that if it's gonna walk. So what we're gonna do is after we drill a hole with this, we're gonna measure the top of the hole and the bottom of the hole to see how much deflection we get. I have gone ahead and spotted using a 140 degree spotting tool. The 140 degree tip on our spot is greater than the 135 on our universal drill. So that's gonna ensure that the tip engages with the material before the outside edges. So good. Yeah. These chips are actually a lot bigger than they look. Titan's hands just make them look <laughs> small. <laughs> like normal drills will just have these long stringy chips. So like just seeing how how small they are, how curled, they're like absolutely perfect. And he drilled like a bunch of holes, so they all consistent. Good job, man. All right, so we just drilled 10 holes at 12 times D without a pilot drill. And the holes look really great on the top, but how did they do on the backside? Did it taper? Now this is 1018 steel, which makes this a little bit more difficult because it's so gummy. Now, as you've seen before, the chips were looking really good. They were staying really small, which is a very good thing when you're drilling something this deep. So we know that the drill sounded good and it made good chips, but the real question here is how does it measure? So we're gonna take some calipers and take some quick measurements on this just to get an idea. We're at about 162. Just kind of like rough measuring these. Now if we go to the bottom side of the hole where we broke out, we're at 161, 160. I'm really impressed with how well this drill did in a soft gummy material without a pilot drill. Now I know I'm measuring a round hole with a flat surface, but this is giving us a pretty good idea and we'd be able to tell pretty quick if we were way off. But this is actually looking really good with just calipers. So I'm really curious to see what this is gonna look like on the CMM. I'm checking the distance between those front holes against the distance on the back holes. And so far, I'm only coming up with about a thousandth of a difference, which is pretty good for 1018 steel. In fact, if you had a metal that was a little more stable than that, those holes would probably come out near perfect. So why did this work? What is enabling us to drill 12 times D without the need of a pilot drill? To answer this, we need to understand what are the main two cutting forces on a drill? Well, that is torque, and thrust. Torque is gonna to come in from the twisting motion of the drill. And thrust force is from the axial pressure going straight back up through the drill. So an easy way to think about this is the Z-axis cutting forces. Now there are other forces that come into play here such as radial cutting forces, but that's really pertaining to when you're drilling through cross holes or on an inclined plane. So under normal circumstances in a regular drilling application, such as what we're doing here, torque and thrust is gonna to be your main two forces that you're gonna contend with. 
the majority of your thrust force is generated from the size and the length of the chiseled edge at the tip of your drill. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So I've got a simple high speed steel drill here. Now I'm not trying to compare high speed steel to carbide. I'm simply using this as a drastic scenario. So if you look at the tip of this drill, they've got a small gash here, but there's really nothing been done to thin this web out. So if this same tip geometry was being used on the carbide drill that we're using, then we're gonna end up generating a lot more thrust force. But if you look closely at these universal drills, they've actually thinned the web and they've created more of a positive angle. And what that's done is it's created a low thrust drill tip design. So it's gonna drastically increase the self-centering capabilities of this drill. And that's what's gonna eliminate the need for a pilot drill for this series of tools. Now, once we started the hole straight, we need a way to keep it straight the deeper we go. So if we take a look at the Kinemetal Go drill, now we all know this is a fantastic drill, but this is a general purpose drill. So you're gonna see a lot less technology being put into the drill tip and the flute design as you would a high performance drill. Now, if you look at the outside of this Go drill, you'll see that the flutes are smooth. Well, that's because this is a marginless drill. So the only thing that's driving this tool and keeping it straight is the tip itself. Now, if we look at our universal drill, we see that we have a four margin design. Now, margins on a drill not only help reduce friction because it reduces the amount of surface contact, it also helps guide the drill throughout the depth of the hole. Now, as you can see, these margins go all the way down the cutting length of the drill. So essentially, this creates a bearing surface to help guide your tool. It also helps when you're exiting on an incline or when you're drilling cross holes. So to recap, a low thrust drill point and a four margin land design is what's gonna allow us to drill up to 12 times D without the use of a pilot drill. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about drilling 12 times D without a pilot drill. Hope you liked this video, like and subscribe, and leave me a comment below if you wanna see more videos like this one. We'll see y'all next time. Barry don't like learning, that's why you don't watch my videos. I right, see this is the part that Barry don't understand. See that tool? So it's ran its operation and it's still in the holder. That's the part that Barry don't do.